Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Independent City Council meeting. It's Tuesday, August 27th, 2019, and it's hot outside. And, uh, well, I guess we're having the heat of summer. Um, but it's cool inside. That is. Thank you. Let the uh, record show that council's all here. And we had a work session downstairs, and we covered the 2040 uh, vision. Uh, council members, you have uh, the minutes of our previous meeting in front of you. And do they meet with your approval? Yes, yeah. I have a motion? Second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. We're going to go to uh, visitor comment. I have uh, Harry Bel uh, Blatto. I have your. Uh, I yeah, you're up. <laughs> uh, hello, I'm Harry Blato. live on 764 Session Street. It's been a while since I've been before the council asking questions. <laughs> I've been just watching. Um, I got several questions. Um, <clears throat> yearly, we were supposed to get a uh, itemized statement of the use of the funds from the utility bills. Did I miss it this summer, or did, was one published? I don't recall seeing it. What I'm going to have you do is I, you have, you've given me your list of questions here, and. Um, we're, I'm going to have you go through through your questions, and in some of the questions are going to get answered tonight in tonight's presentations. And I've already talked to our city manager, and he's going to follow up. Staff is going to follow up directly with you to give uh, answers to your questions. So I, I want to. You're welcome to, to share them with, but I want to make sure that you, you just want me to itemize it, and if, somebody if you, later talk about it. Or somebody will talk about it. Somebody. Well, some of the, some of the items are going to be covered in tonight's presentations, and, uh, and then the ones that aren't. Uh, is that correct, Tom? Yeah, the ones that are, we'll, we'll get back to you directly on to make sure that okay. you have the information here. Correct. That was the number one. Number two was the uh, tour treatment plant cost from six million to nine and a half mil. I'd like to have information on that, why, who, and what's it for, and who pays for it, and when. The, and then the wastewater to the farm north of the air park, uh, Cost uh, is 750k. And my question there: but There was a crop change from rye grass to what that required irrigation, and is the farmer going to pay for any of the irrigation water like he would if he was doing it himself, or is the city paying for all of it? <clears throat> Status of the old city hall: uh, I, I've seen a lot of progress there. And I just wonder what the situation is with it. I see Roten has a for sale sign in front of it, the same as he does in front of uh, the independent station. So just wonder what's going on there. Interesting to the marijuana growing facility, of which the city was so uh, eager to approve for tax revenue, and it's for sale and no operation, no tax revenue. And uh, the building extension across from the air park there at the east end of the building, we just wonder, the air park people wonder what that's for and uh, who's, whose uh, uh, facility is it uh, and what's, what's the use of it. And then one other thing I'd like to have information on is the systems development charges. I'd like to have a listing for like for a year and see what they're used for. And did the hotel pay any systems development charges, or did the city furnish all of that scot free for them? So, any thank you. Questions? Okay, I'm going to take this over right now and get the staff. Let them. Thank you, Harry. Other people. I see no one jumping up to the uh, microphone. So. Uh, under uh, my report uh, for this team, oh, before I get too far, well, we're going to change the agenda slightly. Uh, staff have asked that the museum bylaws and collection policy be held over to a future meeting. The legal people want to look at it again. Okay. There's some stuff, so so we will not be dealing with that one tonight. We will do that at a, at a future time, and uh, I'm not sure that it'll, it'll come in the future. Um, Mr. Mayor, sir. Yeah. Do you mind um, just briefing us on whatever you follow up with him, like an email, so we know what you told um, Mr. Blattle, um the follow-up on these questions? Yeah, well, some of this will be, uh, as we mentioned tonight, um, right. 
but certainly anything we send out, we'd be happy to copy you on. Great. We, we awesome. Thank you. Great. Um, under my report, what I will tell you is I had a chance to um, visit with uh, 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 Denise Do Boyle, the new, uh, our new senator that was just recently appointed. She used to be the uh, representative for the other half of the Senate district, and she worked with Senator Winders for a while. I had a chance to give her a bit of a tour. Uh, yesterday she's familiar with our community as uh, they come over to the movie theater they eat here and they come to events here and she and her family they live in South Salem and so they they know about coming the back bridge and so uh, it was a good chance for her to learn more about our community and uh, we'll be working with her during the coming legislative session but I did want to let you know um, about that uh, we have council liaison reports and councillor Hicks you're the first person up with uh, yeah. My net, please. Um, I don't believe I've actually been to a meeting since since my last report. Um, we have had one, though I was out of state at the time. Um, as far as I'm aware, the a lot of the focus is on the the GPON upgrade, which is, seems to be plugging along um, quite a bit faster than we had originally anticipated. Um, in fact, I just got my upgrade yesterday. So, so, uh, but that's about it. For Okay. Um, and I'm up for the next two. Okay, you got it. So it's been kind of a, a quiet summer with um, Parks and Rec. Um, they did not have a quorum for their July meeting, and um, their August meeting was canceled and business postponed until September. Okay. Um, so not a lot there. Um, Planning Commission has spent actually the majority of their summer uh, dealing with the uh, accessory dwelling height limits um, and working on code revisions. So their packets have been pretty hefty and substantial reading with lots of pictures, which I appreciate. Um, there was, I believe, um, a height limit that was determined for accessory dwellings, 15 feet, is that correct? I'm looking for a staff to nod. I think it was 15 feet that was decided at their last meeting. Sorry, I was I was looking at a future item. So sorry, um, accessory dwelling units. Um, yeah, I, Fred's not here. Um, I don't remember exactly what they did, but they did limit. The okay, yeah, and I, I believe it was about 15 feet or so. But okay, that'll all come out when the code revision is done. Okay, sounds good. Mr. Pessimir, I think it's to you. <coughs> I'm always the first one to talk on this mic, so I never know what to expect. Whether it's going to blast me out or blast you out, or you can't hear me at all. So, um, I have a, a couple of, of longish items to kind of go over tonight. So, um, if I take a little bit more time um, than normal, I apologize. But there's kind of some important things I think we should cover and make sure that um, are are discussed, uh, especially in, in, in a public forum. Um, the first one's actually fairly short. Um, well, actually, the first thing I want to do before I forget is to thank Michelle for stepping in and, and uh, helping out. Um, our uh, uh, city recorder isn't here tonight due to the illness and her death in the family, and so um, thanks to Michelle for stepping up. Um, Liberty to Use Subdivision uh, Construction, just want to give everyone a heads up that um, they are pretty much through the process and construction will begin soon. Um, Liberty to is 30 lots west of 7th Street. Um, it will include an extension of Mountain Fur, um, Washington and Adams Streets uh, down in that area. Um, kind of a second phase of, of what they did there um, not too terribly long ago. So you will see uh, very shortly um, things changing. So uh, if you get uh, comments or reports on that, that's, uh, that's planned for. Um, and they've gone through the entire uh, process to, to uh, get their approvals for that. Um, I wanted to give a report, um, which is actually required um, by our municipal code um, regarding the sidewalks in front of 240 um, Monmouth Street. Um, the municipal code requires before uh, council consider a resolution that I give a, re a report relative to the sidewalks there. And so I'm kind of going to do that at this point in time and then later in the meeting there is a resolution for your consideration um, relative to those sidewalks. 
Um, back in December of 2018, the sidewalks along Monmouth Street and 2nd Street were demolished um, with the anticipation that uh, permits uh, were coming and <coughs> construction was going to be commencing. Um, it's my understanding there have been some uh, financial issues relative to that property and the developer um, has not uh, finished uh, finalizing the permits uh, with ODOT and the city, um, and obtained the permits and uh, construction obviously has not begun. Um, that's been out there for a long time in a state of disrepair and quite frankly um, I have determined that I believe that's a hazard. Um, not having sidewalks on an arterial street um, with all the traffic, uh, pedestrian traffic and other traffic that goes through there is clearly uh, unsafe and um, it's something that I think that we, we need to take action on um, quickly. Um, the city had an agreement with the developer to rebate um, $300,000 for performance on the building construction and sidewalk construction. Um, the period to pay that rebate has expired, so the city plans to use a portion of that money to reconstruct the, the sidewalk, at least that's what we're proposing um, to do uh, with the resolution that will be before you later. Um, the monies were not included in the budget as we expected to actually pay those monies out before the end of last fiscal year. Um, so essentially that money just ended up rolling into the ending fund balance in the general fund. Um, so it's still there, um, it hasn't been spent. Um, but I do want to give you advance notice that if we do spend those monies in sufficient quantity, it will either require a budget transfer or a supplemental budget in order to, um, to, to use those funds down the road. Um, I mentioned that Monmouth uh, Boulevard is the principal arterial. Um, C Street also has, um, or 2nd Street also has a significant amount of pedestrian traffic. Um, there's a hazard and uh, without sidewalks, um, I will bring forward a resolution for you to consider tonight to, to, um, call, uh, to, uh, to determine that that is a nuisance and we can go through the process that's outlined in our code is when we get to that resolution. I don't, I'll kind of talk about more what those steps are and then what the future steps are, but I wanted to make sure at least you had a report of that situation before we did that. Um, another item um, that is going to be tied to a, a couple of different things is um, after uh, a recent meeting, council um, directed me to take a look at uh, properties that may uh, be able to relocate the museum. Um, and so uh, I think uh, some of that was um, predicated by the, uh, the availability of the property on 281 uh, 2nd Street um, that became available. Um, but uh, we went through a process to, to say, okay, well, let's just not take a look at an individual property. Let's take a look at all the different properties that are currently out there or that we think might be able to be out there um, to support a museum so that we're just not looking at one particular thing. So um, we, we did that. We uh, had our, um, our broker uh, kind of come up with, kind of compile a list. We also used our internal knowledge of different things that, that we know that are out there to take a look at what, what, might, um, what might work um, better than the uh, current situation. I think everyone knows that the current um, building um, is what I call vertically challenged, um, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, you have the uh, restrooms in the basement, um, you have to go upstairs in order to get into the main viewing area, and then you have to go up and downstairs just to get to pretty much anything in the building. Um, and, uh, you know, we've looked and talked a lot about uh, what to do with that building, um, potential retrofit and, and ideas to do ADA, and that's extraordinarily expensive and, and, and difficult. Um, so uh, I think it was um, a, a good exercise to, to take a look at. Um, what the result of that uh, analysis was, was the uh, building at 281 Second Street was the best option out there, um, both fiscally and as well as space-wise. It's almost exactly what um, uh, the museum could use um, uh, effectively, and it's also very flat and level, so there would be um, none of the challenges that we have in the existing structure relative to ADA access. There certainly are improvements that need to happen in there. The bathrooms are not um, ADA standard, um, as well as, uh, you know, it's, it's been a building that's had many uses um, of and stuff. But uh, after, uh, after taking a look at that and going through that process, um, we did um, make an offer and negotiated with the seller, and we landed a price about $25,000 under the original asking price, price, and now we're in the due diligence phase. So um, kind of, I'll walk you through a little bit of the process here. 
Um, but I want to remind you at the end of this process, and we put a, a contingency in there that this would have to come back to council for your final approval, which is something that was in the motion that you guys made. So anything I'm talking about here is still subject to um, coming back to council and making sure that you're okay with what's going on. And we may very well, very well find out something during the due diligence period in our investigations that say we don't want to move forward with this deal as well. So this certainly isn't um, anything that's uh, done in any sense of the, of the word, but certainly we're, we're taking steps to move this forward. Um, we have 45 days to complete our investigations and we're gonna look at a lot of things, um, including the structural components of the building, electrical roofing utilities, mold, lead, asbestos, and then also we're gonna have an environmental assessment done to make sure that um, there isn't anything that was historically done in the building that we should know about. We'll, we'll do a, a, a level one analysis and then we'll do a, a phase two analysis if we um, determine that we need to based on the phase one. So um, we'll go through that whole process. We, we gave ourselves plenty of time to do that just to make sure that we can really um, understand what we're getting into um, relative to that, that uh, uh, site. Um, I'll kind of talk a little bit about um, costs. Um, so, you know, we did not have programmed anywhere um, purchasing uh, property for a museum in, in this particular year. Um, and so uh, we'll have to um, allocate those monies at, at some point in time if we decide to move forward. But I kind of wanted to talk about some of the things that we, we've uh, looked at. And, you know, obviously um, we have a, an existing facility which we can sell. Um, there's still a gap between what we believe we can sell that existing building for and that's still kind of a very squishy number as to what that would be um, versus, you know, what we would be paying for this new facility. Um, so one of the things that we're going to um, put on the agenda for your consideration tonight is to um, put the two lots on Polk Street up for sale. There's two lots that the city was uh, given by Boise Cascade a number of years ago. Um, that were intended to, to be developed to someday and um, we're suggesting that if we put those up on the market and we sell those, we can narrow that gap down to something that's, that's very small, um, if any gap at all, um, so to make uh, this end up being as cost neutral as we possibly can um, relative to going from where we're at to where we're going to be. Obviously that won't happen overnight because we'll have to close on this deal and then we'll have to sell a property and we'll have to sell other properties um, if we do this, but um, that's one option for you guys to consider. It's up for your consideration. I put together um, a resolution tonight for you to consider that um, and see if you want to go down that path. Um, that would just be the first step in the process. Again, that would have to come back to you um, if we were to sell those uh, Polk Street properties uh, for final approval. Um, and a public hearing, so. Mayor, may I ask a question? Please. The, it says it later on, and I'm not sure if it's in the memo or the resolution, but um, it says that the intent that Boise C Cascade had was that we would sell the property. Um, is that written anywhere? Is that transcribed anywhere? You know, I haven't found those documents okay. that, that said that, but it was my understanding um, from conversations with, with uh, some people who were contemporary at the time that um, that was, that was there and that was what they I, I think we expressed that's what we we plan to do and, and I think they were fine with that but I, I don't know the specifics of that to be honest I, with you. I can I can feel and I was around then okay. and uh, there were no restrictions placed on it they just they were just getting out of the uh, the community uh, mm -hmm. they were closing their operation and they uh, had some property across the street that had some interesting houses on it at that point and oh, so there were houses on yeah there were okay. there was uh, I think some if I recall correctly there you know it's pretty rough uh, yeah they they run down a long way so that there, there was no purpose uh, other than they gave it to us because a lot of them lived here in town over the years do you have so, any idea how long ago that was I think I think they gave it to us was it an 07 it was. It was not that long ago. I thought it was a long time ago, but it was, uh, I think it's in my staff report. I think it was in 2007. Yeah, and I, I, I think that, that it took a while for their uh, corporate people to bounce things forward. It, it, I think there was some delays before they actually gave, the legal paperwork was done, if I and recall I correctly. I recall, I believe, a burn to learn. At that yeah, I saw, I, it's not something like that, yeah. The burn to learn was across the street in my old proper, in the property I live in. Um, so, but it's unfair to say they gave it to us to turn around and develop. I would say. Okay, I, I wasn't here, so um, I. Right. I appreciate the comment. So, 
Um, so I, I guess, you know, even if we are to make that gap small um, relative to the property purchase, um, I still should uh, let you know that we anticipate there will still be uh, improvements that need to happen to that building that are going to be, you know, fairly uh, expensive. Um, and I think uh, we're hoping that a lot of that can be offset by grants and donations, but we'll have to, uh, to see how that goes uh, as we move forward. Um, so if we do not find anything significant in our inspections, um, we will bring this back to council for final approval. Um, there will be a public hearing for the, along with that as well. And um, hopefully that will be at the September 24th meeting, but we could go to the meeting after that uh, based on the timelines that we have as well. And then finally, um, I'm going to be on vacation from August 28th until September 10th. <laughs> I'm not going to give myself an extra four weeks like I did last year, um, to my much, much to my embarrassment. Um, so uh, I will appoint uh, uh, a couple of people to act on my behalf, and I'll send out something official. But um, uh, essentially, Robin will be um, in charge um, from uh, the 28th through the 2nd, and then uh, police chief. Uh, will be in charge from the 3rd through the 10th. Um, so with that, if you have any questions for me, um, I do appreciate the questions that we've received. Um, those are great questions. Um, we'll work to answer them. I think there's a lot of uh, good uh, questions in there that could probably be um, uh, educational for a lot of people. So we'll be happy to send those out to council and, and make sure that uh, uh, we answer what we can. Some of that, like I said, um, on the uh, was answered tonight. Some more of it will still be answered tonight as we go through some of the other presentations. So. Great. Additional questions for the manager this evening? Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, let's move forward to the wastewater master plan proposal. I'll flip to my pages here. Good evening, Mayor, Council. I'm here to talk to you tonight about facilities planning and master plans. The last master plan the city participated in was in 2005 for wastewater. The city participated in a 2015 facilities plan for the treatment system. And we've been talking about that plan a lot because it involves the SRF loan. Uh, the 2015 facilities plan was specific to the treatment side of wastewater, not on the collection side. So when West Tech Engineering was appointed the city engineer, we took a review of that document and realized that it did not have all of the information needed for a master plan. We asked West Tech in 2018 to take a look at those sub-basins. We've talked about that document as well. And tell us if there were any um, gaps in that study. They identified um, the collection system citywide uh, as needing some improvement um, and based on the last plan that identified that was in 2005 it is time so we requested a proposal from West Tech Engineering uh, that they provide and it's in your packet tonight the new facilities plan has been in the capital improvement plan for several years and it is queued for this year for this fiscal year uh, to start it is roughly a 20-year document that is reviewed every 10 years. And I brought West Tech Engineering if anybody has any questions specific to the proposal. Steve Orr. And uh, I didn't want to cut in. I you go ahead. I was just waiting to see if anybody Oh, okay. Had um, this, this was planned into our budget? Yes, it was. Okay. In, so in the amount that's shown here. The exact amount. Questions for uh, the presenter or the engineer? Does this make good sense? Please do. It's necessary. Yeah. Yeah. There. Okay. Yeah, and I would say you know, some of the cross uh, questions that Harry asked uh, are related to you know making sure that we have the, the proper documents in place to understand um, what we're doing not only now but in the future. So um, it's it's very timely that we get this done. Okay. Additional questions? If not, the, we do have an action that we need to do on this, if someone would so do. 
Uh, I move we accept the proposal from West Tech Engineering not to exceed the amount of $150,000 for the wastewater facilities plan. The motion. Second. And a second. Is there discussion? Everybody good? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Looking forward to that. As we discussed earlier, we're going to bypass the museum bylaws and collection policy to a future meeting. Uh, we're going to go on to the uh, uh, target industry analysis. Mr. Irvine. And I know that um, I know some people came earlier and they were I asked them to come by seven. It's almost seven. And so I think that's pretty, we're pretty good here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, and honestly, um, I have to apologize up front. Um, I was flipping through the packet here, and unfortunately, what you have in your packet is the consultant's uh, slide deck presentation from what they uh, presented on this uh, a couple of council meetings ago. So we don't have the actual targeted industry analysis in the packet for you to approve uh, or you know, for you to consider. So if it's all right, I think what we'd like to do is um, I can I can tell you about it. I can present my kind of what you know what my staff member says and my my recommendations on this but then we probably would have to push this to a later meeting so you can actually have the document in front of you uh, before you determine thank you that was to approve it. that you anticipated some <laughs> of the questions so uh, unless there's objection we'll just hear an oral presentation and move this forward to another meeting and please do excuse me will the document that will be presented to us will that be available online anywhere yes yeah we will we'll get it we'll get it up there early and um, yeah and it sounds like there was some kind of an issue with the uh, the agenda software this time that it wasn't opening and working for some reason so we'll we'll do it a different way if necessary thank you yeah please so, go ahead so just i mean in, in summary and you know, like i say you, you all have already seen a, a presentation from the consultants on this uh probably about a month ago um the the targeted industry analysis is really a opportunity for us to examine the industrial areas around the airport uh, and see if we can identify uh industries or uses that would really kind of you know makes sense in those properties and benefit from proximity to the airport uh, one property in particular uh, actually is adjacent to the airport and has potential for through the fence access um, and so what we were working with the consultants to do was explore the range of possibilities um, you know kind of filter for uh, what type of regional workforce we have the types of industries that that are you know don't necessarily have to be for example right on an interstate highway um, you know that, that can be potentially aviation related or have uh, you know components be making components that, that are related to aviation or benefit aviation uh, and really just kind of see what shakes out so that if we wanted to do a some type of a recruitment campaign we could have the beginnings of uh, kind of a foundation to work from to really identify what types of industry we were targeting the other piece of this uh, project uh, and in, in many ways it's almost the more important piece is to uh, really kind of work with the properties that we already that we have here and identify are they ready for development if not what needs to be done in order to get them ready for development um, because it doesn't ma it doesn't matter to recruit an industry if they can't actually build in your community so the this really kind of focused largely on the property to the west of the airport because that does have the uh, the through the fence potential there uh, but still did consider some of the other properties including a, sh a property that's already shovel ready uh, on kind of striker road and hoffman road um, and so this uh, the analysis really kind of did a uh, provided recommendations on here's the steps that need to be taken to really kind of uh, answer the questions about this property so property to the west it likely has wetland issues we don't know how much so you know, the, the recommendations are, you know, you need to figure out, work with the property owner, figure out where those wetlands are, how, how big they are. And then depending on those answers, there's several different potential avenues uh, that should be pursued in order to get this property, um, you know, kind of prepared for development. Um, I think the key thing for us is um, if there are a lot of wetlands on that property, enough to make it undevelopable, there could be, that could be a rationale to essentially uh, do a swap, pull that piece out of the UGB and bring in a piece that is owned by the same person that has uh, this tiled and therefore does not have wetlands on it and could be entirely developable. Um, that is a fairly extensive process uh, working with the State uh, Department of State Lands, Department of Land Conservation Development, um, and you need to have a reason to start. And so that's kind of what this document is. It's kind of our, if we choose to, to pursue this, this is our, our rationale for starting this. We said we've done the industry analysis, 
we want to uh, really kind of continue to develop job creation uh, and industries in the community. These are the properties that we have identified already for job creation. They are limited, or we believe they are limited in these ways. You know, help us uh, determine if we need to change anything in order to really be able to provide job for this community. Um, so I think that's kind of the, the fundamental piece of this is this report, uh, you know, adoption of this report does not c commit us to anything. Um, it does not uh, kind of make us spend money on anything. It doesn't make us uh, kind of create new policy towards anything. It's essentially a, a list of recommendations that if, you know, that if we choose to, we can start pursuing some of them uh, to uh, try to develop additional job creation land in the community. Happy to answer questions. Who has the, well, let me rephrase that. The property owner has the ultimate say so on what that property is, who it's sold to? Correct, yes. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. We, we cannot, um, I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's private property. It's, you know, kind of with all the, the restrictions entailed by that, or at least as far as us being involved in it. Councilor Court. Um, I'm all for jobs. Growth. I'm all for working and living in the same community. I'd like to work in the community I live in, but I'd like wetland preservation to be at least the focus of this, if not the focus of this, obviously, because it's a jobs program. Mm -hmm. I get that. Um, also, is there going to be a public hearing at some time so that the public can come out and tell? I realize many of the public have participated in some of these meetings, particularly in the air park, but is there going to be a public hearing? Of some such for for this particular document. Well, when we when we take the recommendations and we start to develop some plans, will there be an, a possibility for the for the public to be involved in that? Uh, I would say that probably would be up to us to determine how we want to pursue okay. that. Uh, you know, for example, a, a basic wetland delineation. I mean, there's no uh, public hearing process right. for that. I think, right. frankly, it'll be after that step where once we know, okay, it's only a little bit or it's a lot, you know, we are trying to figure out kind of how to manage that. I think that's where they're, depending on the avenue we pursue. If we were to do some type of a UGB swap or other sort of moving property lines around, then yes, there definitely would be public involvement in that. Is it fair to say that most of the public involvement thus far have been air park residents? The majority, there was, there was definitely at least a couple people who weren't uh, residents of the air park. Additional questions? Please. Yes, ultimately this is looking at the possibilities are, that are available with this property and being prepared for those eventualities based on who it is sold to. It, yes, um, yeah, I would say it also lays a pathway if we would like to take a more active role in uh, making something happen there. Working with the property Yes, owner. working with the property okay. I mean, yes. Yeah, so we don't operate on our own. We don't just no. jump in there and do something. Right. That, that, I just wanted to make <laughs> clarify yeah. that. But it would have impact on the city as far as infrastructure or like the wetland swap, swap or something else. So we need to be aware and alert ahead of time. Exactly. Got it. Additional okay. questions? I had a couple of questions. Please do. Um, and this may be fleshed out in the, the final report. But um, in the constraints, it mentioned uh, uh, transportation access. It, to spe specify what that means? You know, I think it's, it's really largely that, um, you know, for industry, transportation means highways. And so not, be, not being on I-5 is a constraint. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then the other thing is, uh, I was looking at the, the list of businesses they, they were kind of, you know, mentioning, uh, and it's a nice list and everything, but it, it didn't seem to me that any of them really needed an airport. I mean, was there, was there anything yeah. that was specifically needed in airport? Yes and no. Um, you know, a couple of things that the report did was it did some, uh, it looked at a couple other airports uh, with, with adjacent industrial areas as case studies. You know, to sort of say, okay, what have other airports done? How have they developed? What types of industries are there? Uh, so, for example, Aurora and Scappoose. Um, and both of those, you know, they have a couple of industries that do need, you know, actual taxiway access to the airstrip, but they've got a bunch more industry that, that doesn't, you know, they, they either make something that's wholly unrelated to aviation or they make, you know, the seats to the planes or the helmets or something like that. And it just, it's just kind of, it was a convenient spot for them to set up. Um, so yeah, I think there's not necessarily a huge demand for access to the runway, you know, for a particular industry, especially, um, honestly, the, 
Um, that was one of the findings of the case studies was Aurora and Scappoose, their runways are both significantly longer than the runways here. Um, so not having jet access and things like that would be limiting for industry uh, that wanted some type of air, uh, you know, kind of runway access. Uh, but still, you know, it's a, you know, aviation related or, you know, kind of industrial next to an airport is a, is a, a convenience for a lot of industries. Okay. Additional questions? I'll be looking forward to reading the uh, analysis and thank you for clarifying that because uh, that, yes. Yeah, I apologize again for that. <laughs> that happens. Okay, we're going to keep moving. Thank you very much, Mr. Irvine. Uh, we're going to uh, move to uh, Recycled Water Use Facility Project Contingency Fund. Contingency. Welcome back. Good evening. Uh, in your agenda packet, there was a map locating where this project is. It is the recycled water use facility project north of the air park. Uh, last council meeting, thank you, I uh, requested a 50% contingency for Riverview Pump Station project to do some um, difficulties we had uh, underground. This project has seen rain delays and I am anticipating that there are going to be change order requests or time extension requests from the contractor due to those rain delays. The rain delays happened a total of four times. It was pretty unseasonable for the rain, and it was unfortunate the farmer wasn't able to get his crop off of the field so we could start the contract on time. At the end of the contract for construction, we now have the agreement with the farmer so he can get back on the field and put in his crop before it starts raining again. So I have really hard dates on when that contract uh, was to be performed and finished by. Also in that contract are severe penalties if the contractor does not perform and finish by. So due to rain delays that were uncontrollable to us or the farmer, he is, request, he is going to request time. So I'm here to ask for that 15% contingency that was in the budget for this project, as I did last time we were at council. Uh, the funds are uh, accounted for in the state revolving loan fund, and that loan and uh, this project were both approved by council. This project was approved by council on July 23rd. That'll give you kind of the, an idea of how fast we're moving on some of these projects. Um, the project right now is only slightly behind schedule. Uh, we've made some adaptations for the contractor to help speed them along extending work hours, um, approving some faster methods for pipeline and such, but I anticipate he's going to ask for more days because I can't He's going to ask for more days, and it's something I can't provide. So I'm asking for the 15% contingency. And, the, and this was already this was uh, figured in when we were uh, budgeting in this. That we just didn't uh, put in the contingency into the award. That is exactly correct. Okay, and so in, this in is, the future we'll we'll add this to the contract. Okay, so this is not new money. This is just something we'd already approved uh, yes. conceptually, and, and just moving from one pile to another pile. Is that correct? Correct. And we're appropriating the funds that were already approved. Okay. Would you take a moment and, uh, and uh, review for our TV audience and those in the audience here uh, the uh, short line of what, what we're doing and why we're doing this? The recycled water use facility was identified in the 2015 facilities plan and it has to do with our requirements with our permit with DEQ, it's our MPDS permit. And in that permit we can only discharge in the Willamette certain times of the year. Unfortunately, our capacity on that system that holds all summer. So think of it as a swimming pool um, and all of your property drains into it. Um, if you get a lot of rain, your swimming pool is going to go over. Well, DEQ doesn't allow that. So we have to discharge into the river and that's outside of our permit time. So that permit time starts November 1st. So we're actually storing from May 31st to November 1st. So that's what the lagoon systems are for. They're faculty faculty uh, faculty creative lagoons so there we go close enough and um, so those lagoons when they get full we have to notify DEQ that we're going to discharge early um, when that happens we usually get a letter from DEQ uh, telling us that we're outside of our permit we reply that we're aware of that but due to not enough freeboard on the lagoons that we have to discharge otherwise they could if a lagoon goes over the side of the bank, it will inevitably erode the dike that's holding the right. sewage in and storage. So that's not something no one knows. So we have what we call a controlled discharge, and that goes into the Lima River. 
So this facility was identified as an option to building up those lagoons. And there's several advantages to that. One, lagoons take an incredible amount of acreage. They're probably sitting on close to 65, 70 acres right now with a total of 50 some odd acres in water. So in order to expand that, you'd actually have to either build more lagoons inside city limits, probably around their current location because that's where all the lift stations pump to. So that would take a valuable property inside city limits that's better suited for other uses. So it was identified to use irrigation as an option during the summertime when we have issues with capacity. So what that enables us to do is not, uh, in, not increase the capacity of the lagoons per se at that site, but through the summer flow, we can irrigate actually from those lagoon systems as they fill up and then that will keep the water level down until the winter time when we can discharge in the Willamette. It was the most cost of effective way uh, after an analysis. And I gotta say, a lot of these projects, there's a lot of paperwork and build up, but it actually takes years to get to this point. So it's been a big victory for the city to get this far. Um, and we're finally uh, getting started, breaking ground. I can tell you DEQ is very happy. Um, they know that we've been working on it for at least the past five years, very hard the last two years. We've broken ground on it now. And so that, in a nutshell. And I think you also, uh, I wanted to just remind you, I think there is, a, because uh, the issues of warm, trying to uh, discharge warm That's into the river so that we don't have to deal, because there's limitations on, on warm water going into the Willamette River. And so we're avoiding some of those issues also, if I recall correctly. That, that is correct. There, there's a number of item, a uh, number of criteria that your wastewater has to meet by the time it gets to the Willamette. And as you can imagine, during the summertime, temperature is not one we can control. So, thank, thank you for taking the time, Mr. Pestmer. Did you want to add? Yeah, I, I do want to add one thing because I want to make sure there isn't any confusion down the road. Um, so this is uh, the first part of a, this project. Uh, we've actually broken this project up into two pieces. So what you're seeing before you is really the conveyance system to get from the lagoons out to the fields to make sure that the infrastructure is there for the farmer to be able to use um, the irrigation. But we're going to be coming back um, with uh, another portion of the project, which is actually to um, do a little bit of uh, increase of the of the, the well um, for this, for the electrical systems, for the pumping systems, for the other stuff that needs to happen. So I don't want you to think that, that this is the entire project that you have before. We, we intentionally broke it up into two pieces so we could get the important piece done early um, with the weather and everything that we have going on. And then the control systems and the electrical and the pumps and all that stuff is gonna be coming back to a later date. So while we, we saved a significant amount of money um, you know, from, from this conveyance uh, estimate that we do, that's not the entire project. There, there will be more to this project that comes to make this thing uh, functional and operational. Kai, you can add to that if you want. Yeah, exactly. And some of that's identified on the map. This is to be constructed in 2020. That is that extension he's talking about. Additional questions for the, any of the staff people? The speaker had a comment about the farmers benefit or responsibility here I mean obviously we're going to save money because we're not going to have to build another lagoon but what part does the farmer play in all this other than getting water for his field what part does he play so he's changing crop and to a more irrigation friendly crop uh, I believe it's uh, fescue and I'm not sure what variety uh, after that he has an agreement to take so much water per year and then he has the option to purchase water beyond that right and I do not believe, I'd have to look at the agreement, but I do not believe he is paying up to the mandated point though. Um, and as far as participation in the project, I don't believe other than he is granting us easements on his property, uh, that he's contributing to the cost of the project. Okay, thank you. Additional questions? When does he need to have be back in the field? You know, the date, the end of the contract? October 15th. So he wants to be on the ground by October 15th. And we are, are we expected to be able to use this next summer? Uh, next fall. Next fall, okay. Yes. There are no additional questions? This is an action item. I move to authorize staff to utilize contingency funds from the state revolving <laughs> loan in the amount of $109,000 to support the construction of the recycled water use facility. Second. No motion second, discussion, are you okay? 
Thank you for uh, the longer uh, explanation of how and why I appreciate uh, uh, that review. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Passamere, I think it's you. Uh, so this item I talked about uh, earlier, um, along with uh, uh, these are the Polk Street uh, properties which we're um, presenting to you um, and requesting um, that you declare those vacant. Um, I will uh, change the sentence in my staff report um, to say that uh, uh, Boise Cascade gave us for future city disposition. I'll cross that out and, and acknowledge that I was not here and don't, didn't know. So um, I'll just say that they donated to the last year in 2007 and leave it at that. Um, uh, currently, they are undeveloped lots. Um, there are some parks um, in either direction, but not as close as this for, for some uh, residents. Um, right now, the economy is good for residential, um, so it would be a, a good time. We're seeing um, high uh, value uh, for residential lots in general, um, some of the highest we've seen um, probably in a long time or ever. Um, and as long as the economy stays strong, uh, that will will probably com continue. Um, so really, this is uh, an option for you. This is something for your consideration. We can move forward with this. We, we could not move forward with this. Um, but there will certainly be other um, steps in the process. Uh, so if we, if you were to authorize us to, these lots to be surplus and authorize me to um, start marketing them, um, once we actually got to the point of uh, negotiating um, and finalizing uh, a sale, we would actually have to come back to council uh, for a couple things. Um, uh, one is to have a public hearing, um, the other is to make sure it's properly noticed according to state law, um, and then also to uh, get approval of any conditions that we may want to put on the property to make sure that it transacted and, and was developed in a way that was acceptable to the city. Um, these properties do have uh, a significant value up to them. I don't really have a, a, a hard cost, uh, cost on that, but I think uh, it's safe to say that they're, it's in excess of $100,000 um, easily for, for these properties. Um, and really, this is for you to uh, consider and decide um, whether you want to move forward for it. So your options are to um, surplus the property and, and advertise it to, to negotiate for sale. Um, surplus of property to put for weight on the sale um, to know, to market it um, or just uh, decide not to do anything um, on the surplus of this property this time um, so I will let you determine can I ask a, pro a process question do I need to uh, declare a public hearing uh, on the um, on the issue of uh, turning this pro property surplus because I know we have to do I need to? Not do at this point. We would, we would need to do that. Do that uh, before the, if we did a sale. If before the sale. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't miss the key part. Do yeah. do uh, council members have questions for the staff presenter? Okay. I don't see any questions for um, discussion. What do you folks want to do before we get into motions and stuff like that? Uh, um, what do people? What are people's thoughts? Do we want to do this? Yes or no? What are you thinking? Well, I think it'd be a good way to help offset the cost of possibly moving the museum. So, yeah, I'd be interested in doing that. And I know there was uh, uh, we there was some talk a few years ago about you know well maybe there should be a park somewhere in that area. I recall there was quite a few people that said, no, we don't want to park here. We've got parks, you know, in both the, in three different directions that aren't too far away. So that's, and it isn't part of our parks master plan. So I'm not sure what else we would do with that property. Other thoughts? I'm leaning Please. towards option two. Surplus, but wait to sell. I didn't hear the question. And I'm a no. Uh, and, and, and what, uh, uh, she said she was in favor of option two, which option two was surplus the property but wait to sell it. You want to, could you, uh, what, what is your thinking there? I want to see how the museum process moves forward. Yeah. Kathy, you wanted to? Well, I'm, I'm just kind of concurring with, with the Councilor Corps there that that might be an appropriate. 
appropriate course of action. Other thoughts? Anybody else have any other thoughts? Please. I think this is a wise move to make at this time to not only surplus but put the property up for sale. It uh, eases some um, budget restrictions if we have future uh, movement on the on the um, museum, and I think it's uh, best and highest use at this point. Anybody else have anything else, Michael? Please do. I just feel like if we have budget concerns about the museum, maybe we should back off on that. Okay. Um, just so even if we advertise it for sale, it still has to come back to us anyways, yeah. right? So I, I, don't, I don't quite understand um, the benefit to waiting to sell. I, don't know. I, I, guess, I guess I would also say that um, it's a pretty hot market now. Um, who knows what's going to happen, you know, in a month, two months, whatever. I'd rather put it on the market now, I think. Anybody else have anything they want to add, say? Okay, somebody suggest action, please. Somebody? Are we moving it towards the resolution? Oh, uh, it's whatever count, whichever council okay. would like to do. I move that resolution number 19-1510 be adopted as presented. I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion, I have a second. Is there a discussion on this? And, that, and that's, uh, that's option one? Yes. That's option one. That is the way I understand it. And, right, and my understanding. Yeah, that, that I just want to make sure we're all okie dokie fine. Okay, is, I'm getting echo. Sorry, um, I'll try not to talk loud. Um, voice of God. Um, okay, since there's no further discussion, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? No. Okay, uh, we have four yeses and dissenting was Councilor Kaur and, uh, Council, and, and Councilor Jennifer Smith, and some Smith. Okay, motion carries four to two. So I just want to make sure that everybody knows I heard from council that there is definitely a correlation between the timing of the museum and this property. So I will keep that in mind as we as we move this forward. I'll keep in mind too the, the market conditions, but um, uh, certainly we're not going to take this money and put it in the general fund and, and right. you know, spend it somewhere else. It will be tied to um, a building project. Um, Great. Sorry. Pre appreciate the conversation here. Uh, let's continue moving uh, forward. Uh, would you like to uh, deal with the next one? I think you get that one too. I do. So, um, so this item is relative to a memorandum of agreement um, just to create a development council for the continu continuum of care. So I'm just going to kind of explain this a little bit. Um, we've had conversations before um, about the continuum of care uh, here. Certainly um, we had a joint meeting with Monmouth uh, to kind of talk about um, what was going on in the Marion and Polk County regions relative to efforts to, uh, to work with homeless and to continue to consider breaking off from from the uh, uh, rural Oregon um, co continuum of care organization and this is kind of the next uh, step in the process so essentially um, when you saw this last it was a resolution uh, to um, uh, to support uh, uh, moving forward with that concept, and this is really starting to put some of the pieces in place. So the final um, organization and governance structure that is going to end up um, uh, managing the continuum of care is, is um, pretty complex. It's going to uh, entail a lot of uh, local governments. It's going to entail um, you know, nonprofits. It's going to entail people in, in in all sorts of different sectors, and it's a fairly large group that will um, need to meet all the federal requirements and um, all, all the uh, uh, the necessary pieces in order to manage uh, uh, the continuum of care um, for for both counties. And so that's a, that's a pretty big deal. But in order to get from where we are today to there, we need to create um, a development council, which basically will 
put all of that organization uh, pieces into place, figure out how that organization is going to, to run, how the, the bylaws and just all of that process that's going to need to be uh, there to create that. So this really is a memorandum of agreement. It largely consists of um, the, uh, the local governments that were in the Mid-Willamette Homeless Initiative. Um, I, it also includes some nonprofit members who are large uh, partners um, that would need to make sure that uh, their voice is heard during the process. Um, and it, uh, it does uh, take the monies which we had uh, put into the um, Mid Willamette Homeless Initiative for this year, the, that $5,000 it moves it over to this development uh, council. Um, there would be a future commitment of $5,000 next year for us to be a part of that. Um, we've kind of played a leading role along with Monmouth and Salem and Kaiser and Marion County and kind of getting this to this point, we need to kind of broaden that out. We need to get more specific and we need to work really hard to get that, um, that uh, governance structure set up in a way that this can be successful for the long run. So it's, it's pretty, um, I think, important that, that this is done well uh, so, that, um, so that this can get off to a great start. Um, the continuum of care will have a fairly significant amount of money that comes into it uh, for, um, for uh, Marion County, but also for Polk County, uh, which will support our efforts uh, as we deal with uh, homeless issues. So. So with that um, description, really this is uh, largely um, for your information. Um, uh, I wanted to make sure that you had the opportunity to see it and make sure that you understood the funding commitments moving forward. Um, I highly recommend that we uh, continue to move forward and continue to be a leader um, in this area. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's an area where um, I think uh, the city has done a good job uh, in the past, and I think we can play a, an important role in the future, making sure that uh, this works for our. Um, before we go, I, let, let me interrupt for a moment. Uh, I've excused uh, Councillor Ransom Smith. She has a family emergency going on, and she informed me just it yeah. just happened. So uh, she's excused from the rest of the meeting. Please go ahead with your question. Okay. Um, when we originally had the joint meeting, I thought wasn't there talk of maybe um, Yam Hill joining? There was, um, and uh, at that point in time, there were a number of cities in Yamhill County that wanted to join. Um, there are still a number of cities in Yamhill County that I think want to join, um, but the county isn't quite on board yet. Um, however, we did leave flexibility inside this uh, agreement for them to come on board if they want to. Yeah. They'll probably have to do it sooner rather than later, though, because once we get too far in the process, the process will probably have to finish up and then they could end up joining later. Okay. Um, but uh, it's certainly still, the door is still open for them if they want to, um, they, they need to figure out what is in their best interest at this point. Okay. I know other elected officials have had uh, conversations. I know that uh, some of our uh, mayor meetings and with commissioners and uh, uh, this is a strong, good step forward. Are there additional questions for staff? Additional comments? This is an action item, please. I move to authorize the city manager to execute the memorandum of agreement relating to the creation of a development council to form a continuum of care collaborative governance structure for the Marion and Polk County region. Second. I have a motion second. Discussion? It was a mouthful to read of the it motion. It was. Too. <laughs> I hear no further discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, moving promptly forward. Hey, we're getting to see you a bunch tonight. <laughs> Ninth Street Lift Station consultation, Consultants Service Contract. Ninth Street Lift Station is located on the north end of Ninth Street. I believe I provided a map with it circled. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the waste, it's a wastewater pump station. Its site was identified in the 2015 facilities plan as needing further analysis. So in 2017, staff took a look at that, and when we hired our new engineer, um, West Tech Engineering, Steve Ward, who was here earlier, we requested uh, that he do that analysis. Um, the results were completed in 2019 and showed the low station was nearing capacity. And given that the expansion of the urban growth boundary was in the area serviced by 9th Street, uh, it requires 
some attention. Uh, the most of the development going on in town, as far as residential, is in that very basin. Mm -hmm. So we don't want there to be any lack of service in that area. So we asked West Tech to provide a provo proposal for 9th Street Low Station. Um, <coughs> what their estimate would be the cost for an upgrade and how far that would take us out. They provided us with that proposal, uh, which is in your packet. The staff has reviewed the proposal and agreed to the scope of work. Uh, the funds for the proposal would be coming out of the SRF loan fund. Um, and that's also identified in the capital improvement plan. I think it's number 15 in wastewater. So. And this was also part of the budget process that we did? Correct. Okay, so that we, we already took a look at, I, I'm just confirming to folks so they know that uh, these things have been uh, thought about in advance, that we're not just getting these cold. Uh, this is all, was all part of the budget process that we went through part of the plan, and this is the actual uh, making it happen. Yeah, the trail would be the 2015 facilities plan, and then the basin, um, basically a, a relook at that basin. It was approved through council in 2018 and produced in 2019. And then we requested a proposal for those improvements, recommended. And then we had, and then we went through the budget process uh, this right. spring, yeah. which this was included in. Mr. Yeah, Pester, I'll, I'll just add to that. So uh, this was in the capital improvement plan as well um, as the items in the capital improvement plan were presented in the budget. We did talk about these different projects as we uh, with the budget committee and with council and now we're just at that point where we're um, taking the monies that we appropriated in the budget and actually putting them to projects that we're, we're actually moving forward. Thank you for clarifying that. I, I did not do it as eloquently. Are there good additional questions uh, for staff at this point? One thing I would like to please do is it's uh, for construction in the 2021. So we're doing the design now so it can Great. be constructed in the 2021. Great. Additional questions? If not, again, we have another action item. If someone would make a motion, please. I move to approve a contract with West Tech Engineering in the amount of $78,300 for engineering services for the 9th Street pump station. A motion? Second. Second. Discussion? Everybody okay? All in favor, favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Mr. Pesimir, the final item of the evening. Sure. Uh, we've gotten a lot done tonight. So this is the final item of the evening. And uh, before you is for uh, consideration of um, adopting a resolution um, relative to declaring uh, the sidewalks adjacent and abutting to 240 Mama Street a nuisance and directing the uh, repair of the sidewalks. I talked about this uh, earlier in my report, so I'm not going to go back through everything. But I would like to talk about uh, the process a little bit uh, moving forward. Um, I mentioned that uh, given the duration of sidewalks not being available and the high amount of pedestrian traffic, um, we believe that it's imperative that we get this work done um, soon um, and get uh, the, uh, the sidewalks um, uh, finished by the property owner or through the abatement process, whichever this resolution basically sets out um, the conditions for, for that to happen. So uh, within five days of passage of this uh, resolution, we will send a notice uh, to the uh, property owner um, who's on the tax rolls to, to make sure that they understand that this was uh, passed. Uh, we also uh, are giving them 60 days um, in order to, to make those repairs. Um, I don't know uh, if they will be able to. We'll certainly have those conversations to see. Um, there's still some design work that needs to be done. There's still a lot of permits that need to be obtained from ODOT, from the city. I suspect that will take a, 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 some time anyway. Um, so essentially, if uh, it isn't accomplished within uh, 60 days, then uh, the city would um, work on abating uh, the sidewalk and making sure that there is a safe passage. Uh, we would probably uh, finish up the permitting process um, for uh, the plans and then um, uh, do the construction of it. It's going to be a fairly expensive project, um, just uh, given the amount of sidewalk and the design of, of the uh, infrastructure that is necessary there. Um, I will mention I did not put in my staff report, um, so I want to make sure I covered it. Um, I covered it earlier, but uh, this monies are not in the budget. 
Um, so if we are to do move forward with the abatement and the city is spending monies, we would have to um, come back probably with a, a budget transfer or a supplemental budget in the future in order to, to make that happen. Um, so um, with that, um, this is a resolution for your consideration. I, I believe the, the property owner is here um, if you have questions. But uh, I um, highly recommend that we um, get this situation taken care of as quickly as possible. And I think at this point, that's probably the best way in order to go about it. Mr. Size, did you want to say anything since you're sitting here? Uh, I'm in agreement. OK. <laughs> All righty. Are there questions for uh, uh, for staff at this point? Yes. Yeah. Please go do. Again, uh, <laughs> All sorts of them. All right, we're going to just start at the left there. and work right. OK. Council Court. I appreciate that this is being called a nuisance, but this is really a safety hazard. I mean, there's a bus stop out there. I worry about people standing out there. Yeah. I'm using that word because it's a specific Probably word the in the code term. and that, that needs <laughs> yeah. to be said. Yeah. So I agree, it's, it's a hazard, it's a safety issue, and it's yeah. a nuisance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you earlier mentioned that the, um, the proceeds from the sale of the building had not been allocated to anything. So those funds are still there that can then be utilized? So yeah, they are sitting in the general fund as uh, additional ending fund balance. They were. Um, allocated in last year's uh, budget, which ended July. Right, because I know we assumed we would be right. rebating so, the money anyways. Right. We didn't, and so we did not appropriate those monies for, for that additional 300000 because it, it would have really thrown things off in the budget for one, but um, two, we actually expected actually to be done with it by then. Right, so, um, so, e so even though it is not a budgeted item, there are some funds available to assign to the project. That's correct, yeah. If That's essentially the it would come out of the, I'm looking yes, for. It would come out of the Indian fund balance. Um, okay, perfect. Thank you. Councilor Morton. Yes. yes. You mentioned earlier the $300,000 rebate that would go back to the property owner if performance was, was uh, completed on sidewalks. Yeah, so it was broken into two components, $100,000 for the sidewalks and $200,000 for the building. That rebate um, period ended um, a, a few weeks ago. And it's off the table now unless council were to approve something different. Yeah, we would have to renegotiate. Good. Okay. Sort of thing, so. Thank you. Next. Council take us. Good. You're good? Good. Okay. Additional questions? <laughs> okay. Um, this is an action item. <clears throat> I move to adopt resolution number 19-1512, a resolution declaring a certain hazardous sidewalk a nuisance and directing improvements. Second. Motion second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 And opposed. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure there'll be some conversation. Anything else? I think we have announcements at this point. Is there anybody has announcements? Well, you know that I usually do. Yes, uh, the next event coming up for this community is September 12th is the Hoppin Heritage Block Party in downtown Independence. Sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun and I hope you can come. Great. Anybody else? Council members, I just want to let you know that uh, I've worked with staff a little bit and uh, you saw we had a full agenda this time. Uh, I do not at this point uh, anticipate a meeting on the 10th um, because we, we tend to knock things off promptly. And so unless something big comes up, uh, we will not have a meeting on the 10th and uh, we will so notice. Is that okay with everybody? And is it okay to wait a whole month on the... Um as I understand from staff, that okay. it, that's, uh, that's okay, fine, with everybody. So without objection, did somebody send us home? Move to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. <laughs>